who will be talking. <laughs> and, uh, well, then I, I end up talking. Just bear with me and don't be don't be sleeping on me. <laughs> and don't, don't be bored. Well, I uh, I am glad that I am able to say something at least the uh, the uh, pioneer. But anyway, uh, I think I am one of those group in those days that cannot make it to secondary school. Well, we, when I was young, I'd been trying to go to school, to a secondary school, but somehow I cannot make it. Maybe I'm, I'm not that smart enough. I've been spending my time fishing, <laughs> doing other things. But uh, in my dream, I uh, <coughs> always want to become a pastor. That's one of my dreams, want to become a pastor. And I always pray that, uh, that hopefully someday I'll make it, uh, I'll be a pastor. But somehow, you cannot become a pastor if you're not educated. <laughs> so I've been trying to go to school, and I cannot. So I, but luckily during that time, because my father is uh, working on note, he have the money. So they know when I complete my, my primary year, they realize that I cannot go to the secondary anymore. So they said, well, you have to go to Tarawa, go to Tarawa here, Maybe by then you will be able to find a school. So when we, I came here, the only school I can enroll in is Auditia Bokoya Ataria School. And because you can take anybody, Ataria like to take anybody that have money. Okay? Why they like to take anybody that have money? So I, I, able, I talked with him uh, maybe uh, this week, and he said, well, if you have the money, you pay now $60, and you come tomorrow. <laughs> so that's where I started to school. So I was happy, I told my parents, oh, I find I have a school now, oh, good. But I realized that we come to school here, we are only here to play games. <laughs> because during that time, all of you that President Dune have already said, some of you are here, like Marino, we have to have a student before us. And uh, our table, like, it's, it's a drum, and uh, sitting on the floor. When it's raining, we have to move around because there's leak. And, uh, but we enjoy doing that. And not, maybe we are school only how many? One month? School is out, run out of budget. <laughs> but we are excited. We always have what they call it a cooking day. So we can spend at least a week to look for food and what, what we will be doing. But anyway, we enjoy those those days. We just here to play. But then, luckily, that I, I made it to to be a one. But every every time when students are going to come or or going to fly away, we other one always go to the airport and we sing for them. And then I, all, I, one of them said, and when, when will be my turn, will be, when will be my time to go? So that I can be standing with a group of people, a student that are going, and student will be singing for me, okay? And then, somehow, one day, a uh, white principal said to us, whoever have the money, whoever have a hundred dollars, Bring it to me, and you'll be able to uh, go to Roma next year. That's 1974. That's 1974. Luckily, I, I told my parents, I tell telegram to my parents, I need some money, because I really want to go to school in Vietnam. So they said, uh, how many weeks later, they said, money. I was very happy, I take the whole money to, I receive up somewhere around 250. I never forget that day. I, I give the whole money to the principal well, and said, here's my money, you take care of it for next, next year. Oh, very good. Then he take my money and he never mentioned anything about it. <laughs> 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 and then, 
Then after that, then the following year, I mean, now uh, when the, the school is out, I have to go back to now. Then I was waiting for him to tell me that I am going when when I'll be leaving or going. He never said anything to me, and I was worried. Am I going or not? <laughs> then uh, toward the end of the, the Christmas year, January came and she would, nothing we been with anything. So I had to fly back from now to here. And I went and see him and I said, am I going? And I said, and he said, well, it might be very hard for you because you come late. <laughs> well, he didn't say anything. <clears throat> well, you might be late, but we don't know what will, what uh, you might be lucky. And during that week, there are, we have a visitors came from Vietnam. We have a man by the name of Harris, a superintendent, and uh, a mission president from Fiji named Ma Pama, President Ma. They came and visit. Then, uh, then uh, White there said to me uh, one evening when I was there with the, the group, he said, well, do you have the money? Do you have to you bring your money with you? Because we need to buy your ticket now because you're going tomorrow. <laughs> then I said, hey, how about my other money? I already gave you <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you already spent my money. <laughs> then he said, well, you don't have to worry about that money now. But we need money now because see, we don't have time to go to the bank. <laughs> but now I want you to, to, if you have that money now, I want you to go buy your ticket, pay your ticket and everything. So that you can go and you're lucky you'll be going with, uh, with, uh, with these people. They said they were happy to take you. And I said, but you told me that it's very hard now. Well, lucky they said, yes, you can go. <laughs> So, uh, oh, oh, okay, so I, I gave him the money and he, he, he paid everything, my ticket and everything. So the following morning, we just went to the airport. I was waiting for a student to sing for me, <laughs> but nobody said. <laughs> <laughs> so every morning we just fly all the way to Fiji, and then uh, I'm lucky because I'm with these, these people here. They took, they take, they, they, they could care of me all the way to Fiji and then to the island. There, that's where I know, that's where I started, that's where I know we finally start going to school, <laughs> going to classes every day and doing all of those things. But then, I think I am very lucky, why? Because I am the first, the first Kiribati that go to America. I'm one of those group that go to Lyon and then make it to uh, America. And I'm proud of that. Why? I guess because of uh, there are a couple that came. A couple that came and then I happened to get appointed with them. I get appointed with them because this man here, he came to the dome and he said to the boys, who happened to be the best climbing coconut tree boy? <laughs> and everybody called me, oh yeah, he is. Because uh, I think in my time, I'm one of the best climbing coconut tree. <laughs> okay. So the man took me along and said, you sure you can climb a coconut tree? Oh, yes, yes. Very good and fast too, I can run. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he took me to uh, his home and then to a tree where he's told me, you know, he said, I want you to tie me my, my antenna. Because I want to listen to Salt Lake City to American news and I cannot hear anything. But I need somebody to, to climb that tall tree there with this wire antenna here and then you can tie it up there and hopefully I will get some signal. So I took this antenna and just walk up to the tree. Oh, yes, I believe you can climb. And then from there on, I guess this, uh, this couple here happened to be, their last name is the Bishop. So I started to get acquainted with them but somehow they didn't complete their mission. They were there to be teachers, but only halfway to go, and they they had to go home. They had to go back to America because they cannot agree with the Thoman, with the Thoman principle and things there.
So they said, well, if you guys cannot agree with me, I am going back to America. I'm not here, I'm not, I cannot, I don't want to be here and see all these things happening the wrong way. So I'm going back to, to America. Then the following day, how many days later, he called me to their home and they said, well, we are going to America. Plus, even though we are going to back to America, we know one reason why we are here. I look at it, oh yeah, why? Because we are here to catch you to America. <laughs> so, do you want to go to America? Oh, you have to be very good. Then I thought they just making fun. I thought they just were in stories. But then I was surprised I ended up in America. So I ended up in America going to high school, complete my high school, in Payson High School. And then I graduated and go on a mission. I go on a mission because and then during that time, because my, my that, uh, the guy that uh, take me, their son, family, is a seminary teacher too. That's why I guess I end up to be a seminary teacher. <laughs> He's a seminary teacher and every time in his class, he will bring me to his class and he always said to his student, why well, am my son going to keep a talk to all of you? And he never say anything to me. He's going to keep a talk to all of you, and he's going to tell you why he's going on a mission. <laughs> so I don't have any choice. Even though I don't know why I was speaking English, I have to say something. <laughs> so I just stood up there and tell everybody why I have to go on a mission. Okay? But I enjoyed them very much, and then there I went on my mission. And came back. But one very funny thing, I, uh, I enjoyed the, the church. One thing I enjoyed in my life is uh, my patriarchal blessing. Why? Because of uh, my patriarchal blessing, when I receive my patriarchal blessing, it tells me all good things in life. Like right? one of them, he said, you'll be climbing the mountain of education. Oh, <laughs> is this very true? Or trying to, the patriarch tried to make me good, feel good. And I never felt or no idea that I'll be going to university. No idea at all. I thought I'll be just going to Liahona and then come back to school. But then when that happened, that I uh, now I'm in America, going on a mission, I said, oh, it's true. I think everything will be possible. But I still, I still not sure whether I'll be making to school or not all of those things. <coughs> Then uh, after my after my mission, I came back, and then they said, "Are you uh, now? You're going back to? Uh, we want you to go to BYU Hawaii, but you had to take the test first. So I went and took the test, and I never thought I would make it. But I went and take the test. The result: said, Oh, you make it. You're going to BYU Hawaii. But anyway, uh, I don't want to talk that long." I am, I am grateful that, uh, that I, uh, everything made possible for me. I went to school to BYU. And then, I guess one of the reasons, yeah, I'm one of those students, first student, that didn't complete education. But I think there's always a reason why. I've been living in America and I've been having American girlfriend, you know, kind of, that come to the idea that maybe I'll stay in America, okay? And, uh, but I know in my blessing, he said, after you climb the mountain of education, you will go back to your own island. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, maybe I'll go back to America because I have American parents. Okay? But then I was surprised. I came to the point where lazy to study too and all those and decide maybe go back to America. Somebody called me to the office and he said, do you know you are hired now to go back to Kilimanjaro and be a teacher? What? You going back to Kilimanjaro and be a teacher? Are you sure? Oh yes, yeah. So you just sign the form here if you agree with that, then you'll be going back to Kilimanjaro and be a teacher. You don't have to worry about anything. The school will take care of you. We will send you right into the school and start working there. And you're going to work for us three years, that's a contract, and we will bring you back to school. Oh, that'd be good, but can you imagine how long I've been here? 
24 years. <laughs> but anyway, so I signed the contract, then I gave it back. That's why I did. I came back here because they wanted me to come back. So I came back here and then somehow everything worked out. I ended up falling in love with my wife. <laughs> And then when we came here, that's when we start things here, staying in the dorm. Some of you are my student in the dorm. Sorry guys, you one of my students in the dorm. That's a dorm father, okay? And uh, then here, things start to change. Yeah. Father happened to be my student too, okay? And uh, I enjoy teaching here during that time because everything, more and I start changing during that time. That's another funny story then, because during those times, there's a piece of land right in the middle that haven't been bought. Haven't been bought, and the land's left. And then uh, before I came, they tell me a story that uh, a man don't want to sell the, the land, his land. And right in the middle, so the other side is the door, and there's a piece of land that haven't been bought, and then they sign. And the man don't want to sell the, the land. But then uh, a man by the name Raceta, I said that he talked with the man and there's a other the came, an American guy, he talked with him and then the man talked with the friend and he said, tell the man if he want to sell the, his land for six, six hundred, I mean sixty thousand dollars. Then the man thought, hey, are you willing to sell that, I mean, are you, you happy when we give you six thousand, sixty thousand dollars? But in those days, it's very hard to get that much money. So when the man heard it, he said, are you sure they're going to give me that much money? Yes, just sign here, the money is yours. Then that's where we get that back. The man go ahead, sign the check, give them, that's where we get that. And then from there on, later on, I mean, the modern eye started changing. They don't have a building here, they just start building all this classroom and I came here. And we have only a chapel and the classroom there. In that uh, in the in the chapel side those classroom, each classroom they have two. Like classroom, then there's a divide between. There are two classrooms there, every classroom is two. So everything everything is very small and open. But we enjoy it during that time. But again, uh, Again, my brothers and sisters, uh, I'm very happy now to see that more nice very James from the humble to now to the bad. And all of you that are here with us should be very happy. Now I've uh, been here 25 years, 24, 25 years. Okay? And I'm happy too because I uh, happen to be, I am also one of, I am the first, the first one to serve a mission in America. Among all those groups, I happen to be the first one to be to serve a mission in America. Okay. I think that's is a, I am glad of that life that I have enjoyed. And I hope, I guess maybe, and the dream that I, I told you before, the dream that I've been dreaming about to become a minister is fulfilled. I remember when I first arrived in Lyon, <coughs> the principal interviewed me and he said, what will you want to be when you grow up? Because I always had that thing of want to become a minister. I said, I want to become a KBC minister. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, oh, that's good. I mean, one good thing about that principal or that man that interviewed me, he didn't say, but you are in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say that, but he, this is what he said. Oh, I'm glad you are willing to do that. Now I can encourage you to take seminary and study hard and do things and you will be able to, feel, to fulfill that dream. Now I am back. My dream when I was young, it's fulfilled.